Today on Meal Wars, we're getting out the walk and rocking some Chinese beef with broccoli. Hello and welcome back to Meal Wars. When I was a kid growing up in New York City, I was lucky enough to have access to some really amazing Chinese food. And one of my local restaurants made beef with broccoli that was just a little different than all the rest. It was saucier and it was more flavorful. You could eat the beef and broccoli as one meal and then have the rice and sauce as a second one later and it was amazing. I've been working on recreating that recipe for years at home, and today I'm gonna share it with you because the battle for bringing in the takeout is gonna be one hell of a fight. And we're gonna fight it right here on Meal Wars. This isn't just a recipe, it's sort of an intro to Chinese cooking. So far on this show we've been taking baby steps and this is a little bit of a leap. Don't worry, you'll be surprised how easy it actually is. I know we're getting into some equipment and some ingredients that are a little bit outside the norm, but I assure you all of the equipment and ingredients I'm talking about today will serve you well to have in your kitchen for years to come. Now this kind of Chinese cooking and really anything where you're stir frying is about one thing, preparation. Now that said, Let's get prepped for making some beef with broccoli. The first place we'll start is with our beef. For that, we're gonna want flank steak, which is usually a tough cut of meat, but we're gonna use some little tricks to make it tender and delicious. The first trick is in how we slice it. We wanna find the grain of the meat and slice across it. And then we slice it on the bias, like so. That's gonna take what would have been a chewy piece of meat and turn it into something much more pleasant. Then we cut that up into bite-sized chunks and get it into a bowl ready for our marinade. Our second trick to make this meat tender is a little bit of baking soda. Not too much, just maybe half a teaspoon. If you add too much, it'll create some off flavors in the meat and we don't want that. Then we start our marinade with two tablespoons of neutral oil. I recommend avocado, sometimes I use olive oil for this too, it doesn't really matter much for this. Then about three tablespoons of water and one tablespoon of cornstarch. This is called velveting and it's very common in Chinese cooking. Basically, if you're doing a stir fry, always do this with your meat and you'll have upped your game substantially. God, look at that. What's with this guy not wearing gloves? This brings us to our first ingredient that signifies what we all think of as Chinese beef with broccoli, oyster sauce. Yeah, it doesn't really taste like oysters and if you're skeeved about eating oysters, Get the gluten-free one. Usually it's vegetarian and contains no oysters. And it tastes remarkably the same. And now for our other ingredients. We have two cloves of garlic chopped, one and a half teaspoons of ginger also chopped, and our broccoli, fresh of course, which we have pulled apart into little florets. And then all we have to worry about is our sauce. We begin with three quarters of a cup of chicken broth, one teaspoon sugar, two tablespoons soy sauce, that's tamari that we're using here, which contains no wheat, unlike some other soy sauce. One teaspoon dark soy sauce. Wait, dark soy sauce, what the heck is that? Isn't regular soy sauce dark? Basically, it's a thicker, sweeter, less salty soy sauce. We can buy it at our local Asian market, or if we're gluten-free and want to save a dollar or two, we can make some. Real quick, here's how it goes. Add one cup of brown sugar to a quarter cup of boiling water. Add one tablespoon of molasses and boil that down until it thickens. Then add a half a cup of tamari soy sauce. Let it reduce a bit and then decant into your favorite holding vessel. You now have dark soy sauce. So you're probably going, what the heck? What are you trying to bankrupt me? This dish is gonna be so expensive if I have to buy all these things. Well, these ingredients right here are staples in Chinese cooking. Having them in stock means you can cook a huge number of dishes. Just on this show alone in the coming months, you'll be able to use these ingredients for at least five more amazing restaurant favorites. So I say get them, it's worth it. And the links are in the description. Hey, look, that empty cup is now filled with oyster sauce. Isn't editing amazing? That's three tablespoons of oyster sauce to be exact. And then one teaspoon of sesame oil. Blend all of that and then we'll actually get started doing some cooking. But what are we gonna cook in? Ah, oh, come on, you knew it was gonna be a wok. A carbon steel wok to be exact. There are all different kinds of woks and this is a round bottom with handles. We'll do a show on woks and choosing the right one for you, but I'll put a link to a couple in the description for you as well. 
Investing in a wok is one of the best things you can do in your kitchen. It's not just for stir fries. I use it for deep frying and I also use it for large dishes that don't fit in regular sized pans. It's incredibly useful. One thing that's important with a wok is getting it hot enough. And for that, we're gonna be using one of these 15,000 BTU butane burners. It's not as hot as a restaurant wok, but it'll do for our purposes. All right, let's blanch this broccoli in some almost boiling water because I don't have the patience to wait for it. We wanna blanch that for about 90 seconds. Some say less, but I like mine cooked just a little bit more than typical. Then we put that in an ice bath, drain it, and set it aside. Now that our wok is smoking, are you ready for the five minutes of action after all this buildup? Yeah, I know, that's what she said. And in goes our beef. <laughs> you gotta tell her to stop saying these things, okay? This is a family show. We don't need this cooked all the way through just yet, so we're just gonna put it on for about 90 seconds. Then we pull that and set it aside. Now we lower our heat a bit on the wok, add our garlic and ginger, and then some Shaoxing wine, which is a Chinese cooking wine. If you skip buying this, you can use dry sherry, which is very similar, but really not the same. I do recommend using the Shaoxing. And now we add our sauce. And now we add our cornstarch. Then we have the camera overheat and lose some footage. And our beef is back into the pool. That's gonna thicken up nicely as we add our broccoli back in. And guess what? We're done. All that for that. Let's get this plated and taste some. All right, well here we are for the tasting. And what we've done today is to get beef with broccoli from our best local Chinese restaurant. There it is, all $14 worth of it. This cost, I don't know, this cost less than that to do the entire family's dinner. So I haven't added it up yet, but I will. It's good, all right. All right, so you are gonna test this because okay. I, I can't You can't do this. this. So this is all my lovely nice. wife okay. will try this and compare these two. Mm. Looks like they, did they put carrots in there? Mm -hmm. I don't understand that. See, when I grew up, there were no carrots in beef with broccoli. See, they call the dish beef with yeah. broccoli. I don't hear anything about any carrots. I'll be honest, the beef feels a little questionable meatish. Really? Like it, it's a little chewy, a little sinewy. Really? It's not very flavorful. It's honestly, it's kind of flat. All right. It's kind of flat and flavorless. Oh, I'm right. sorry to hear that. I always like that place. <laughs> I like that place for the most part. Um, that's not a dish that I would buy from there, though. No? No, oh, wow. not for, four, what'd you say, 14 bucks? 14 bucks, yeah, yeah. Mmm. Yeah. Not talk, see, politeness, folks, not talking with your mouth full. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I took a big bite. I taste the ginger, mm. the soy sauce, whatever seasoning you put in there, it's mostly oyster sauce. This is Chinese oh, okay. oyster sauce, which is the real flavoring. There's of no soy broccoli. sauce in it. There is soy sauce. There's there's mm. there's both light soy sauce and dark soy sauce, and there's uh, mm. and but the oyster sauce is really the thing for that, that makes beef with broccoli. Yeah. It so what I like about it is because it, the the broccoli's are crunchy and fresh, and you can tell they haven't been sitting in right some questionable Chinese restaurant for a long time, <laughs> and and the meat tastes like meat, not right. product. And I taste all the flavors, especially right. the ginger. I love that ginger that you put in. Well, that was one of the things. Or was about, it garlic? Um, no, there's garlic ginger. in there too. Oh, okay. But one of my favorite things, I, I go a little bit more ginger than most recipes for this because yeah. uh, that was the way it was in my favorite Chinese restaurant when I was a kid. Oh. And they had, so they, 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 they had a little bit different than everybody else. It was more sauce and it was it had a little more ginger and a lot more oyster sauce flavor than, than, than the regular, like normal beef with broccoli. Yeah. This is way more flavorful and complex. This is kind of bland, kind of boring, and it's questionable freshness. I'm almost sorry to hear that. Yeah. Well, I'll take it as a compliment. Yeah. And, well, thank you for joining us today, and I hope that we lived up to your expectations and that you'll like and subscribe and hit that bell button so that they tell you every time we put up a video. Yes. Oh. Such a better deal. <laughs> $14 about for the whole family it could versus be in there. like $14 for one person. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. All I right. hope I see you next time. Bye.